I would like to present you a person who was so important during these two months. Of course, World Health Organization is uh, uh, the most reputable organization around the world in uh, the last uh, uh, COVID crisis, but still we were looking uh, for the participation of each member of the staff of the Bulgarian representative office of this uh, World Health Organization. Uh, looking forward for all the information they had to share and thank you in before like a normal citizen, uh, a Bulgarian who was really urgent to listen to all the information that you could share uh, in order to protect our health and working 24 hours uh, per seven uh, around the clock in order to provide us with all the, the best uh, consultations and advices we could manage. So this is Mr. Uh, Dr. Skander Sila. Uh, since 2017, he served as uh, World Health Organization representative and head of country office in Bulgaria. He has worked for uh, World Health Organization for over the past 20 years. In the recent years, Dr. Sila had a prominent role in catalyzing policy development through informed social and health policy options and technical cooperation towards building sustainable health system in Bulgaria in the light of the Sustainable Development Goals. Global Agenda Health 2020 for European Region and Universal Health Coverage. So Dr. Skander Sila is graduated from Medical Faculty of University of Pristina and holds a master's degree in international health from University of Copenhagen since 2003. He is author and co-author of several publications in different fields of public health. I'm really eager to listen to your presentation. Please share your screen. Uh, greetings. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Greetings, Marina. Can you see? Yes. Yes, yes, we can okay. see. Okay, great. It's, it's my great honor and privilege to be here at this important event and also to represent World Health Organization country office in Bulgaria and looking forward to greater partnership uh, with your faculty. It's made great honor also to greet all the participants to this webinar. My presentation will be focused on the aspects of the business and protection of public health. As you all know, public health is very important dimension for all aspects, also economic, social and other developments of human society. My outline of the presentation for today's webinar, we would have a few slides that would look closer to the pandemic transition towards new normality that we speak all over the world in different countries. They already started to ease on the measures that were undertaken recently. How business can contribute towards safer public health not only today, but also in the future. And the final issue that I'm going to touch is how Bulgaria managed so far to address aspects related to COVID-19 or the pandemic. If you look to the history, human being, apart from being in different wars, natural disasters, man-made disasters, was always in the battle and fights with invisible enemies like microbes, whether are bacteria, viruses, parasites and the others. As you could see, for example, that outbreak of black death or bubonic plague wiped out 30 to 50 percent of Europe's population. After that, about 100 years ago, we had Spanish flu, which based on estimations killed about 40 and 50 millions of people. So the pandemics are inevitable and the issue is not whether they are going to happen, but the issue is when. This is not unfortunately the last pandemic that humanity is facing, so we might see also in the future. 
As one well-known author, Yuval Noah Harari, has indicated how the world would look after coronavirus. And I would like to quote him. Yes, the storm will pass. Humankind will survive. Most of us will still be alive, but we will inhabit a different world. Let's hope that we will inhabit a better world to live. Today, even before the pandemic, humanity and our planet was facing three dimensions of the crisis, climate or environmental crisis, equity crisis, and crisis of values. Let's hope that in the future, this crisis that has been with us for many years will be addressed in better way by world leaders, by community, but also by the whole society. Since 2009, World Health Organization has declared five public health emergency of international concerns. This is the highest level of alert that is calling member states to undertake all the measures to protect public health and to save the lives of the people. And the COVID-19, as you know, was declared in 2020 in order to call all leaders of the world, the communities, to respond adequately and effectively to this invisible enemy, which has caused more than 4 million cases and our around 300,000 deaths so far. This is the global situation as of yesterday. Today, these numbers might have changed because the situation is very evolving. As I mentioned, there are more than 4 million confirmed cases and the by today might be almost 300,000 deaths. And these are top 10 countries which have the highest number of total cases. Today, Russian Federation is in third place after USA, Spain. And the situation will continue to evolve based on the epidemiological situation. Every country is having different situation, but every country must be prepared in order to address the key leading increased vulnerability factors. And these factors, they start from lack of clean water and sanitation. We know even here some vulnerable communities might face such issues. Poor access to healthcare basic services, about food insecurity and malnutrition to weak systems, health and social governance. In some countries, we have even armed conflict and violence, which might further deteriorate situation. A closer look to the shadow of pandemic. We are not dealing only with invisible enemy like virus, but for example, globally, 243 million women and girls have been subjected to sexual and or physical violence by an intimate partner in the previous 12 months. The stay at home orders further isolate women with violent partners. Domestic violence reports in France increased by 30% since 17 March of lockdown. Domestic violence also have been increased in several other EU countries and worldwide. And this is causing double burden of disease and consequences, not only the virus itself, but also mental health consequences, violence, and other dimension of chronic diseases. If we look to the economic aspects, which your faculty is dealing more, if you look from the global perspective, lockdown and containment measures threaten to increase relative poverty levels among the world's informal economy workers by as much as 56% in low income countries. For these workers, stopping work or working remotely at home is not an option. Staying home means losing their jobs, and for many, it also means losing their livelihoods. 
So this is the entire dimension of this crisis, and these are the most dark days of humanity in 21st century, unfortunately. How WHO would like to address this transition process towards a new normal, towards a new transition? There are four dimensions, four pillars that every country must take into consideration before they make their decision. First is public health and epidemiological situations. It means that every country should be able to have a clear picture about situation and also to under undertake all the measures needed. The second pillar is capacity for dual track health system management. It means that health system doesn't need deal only with COVID-19 cases, but many other issues which are important. We know, for example, that immunization services in this country for some period have been stopped, but they have been reinitiated again because they are very important in order to keep the people safe in aspects of health. The fourth, the third dimension is about population behavioral insights. The decision makers should understand what are the views of ordinary citizen about the situation? What are the views of business community? What are the views of academia and the others? On this dimension, we are going to do a survey, a representative sample in Bulgaria with respondents across the country in order to know from them how authorities dealt so far with the situation, where the messages are adequate and what they expect in the future. And the findings will be shared in order to make an informed decision in the future. And the final pillar is social and economic implication. Social and economic support measures are critical to ensure that during this difficult phase, no one is left behind. And at the heart of all these pillars are data analytics, communication and governance. So transmit, transition must be guided by public health principles, economic and societal consideration, because this is not only health issue, it affects economies, it affects social values, it affects each and every one. So, and when it comes to economic, we need to make sure that workplace preventive measures are established. Other are more related to health, in which I am not going to elaborate further, and we need to make sure that we have we have sustained measures, stepwise incremental easing, modulation of measures based on the evolving of situation, and to ensure that we protect vulnerable people. Every society has vulnerable people. I have read today in news that, for example, in Geneva, Switzerland is one of the wealthiest countries in the Europe. One kilometer line of the people waiting to get the food because they lost their jobs and people, migrants and the others, so they might be vulnerable. So the key is that we are all together in this issue and we need to go forward together. And the most important dimension is that we need to protect the vulnerable and leave no one behind or marginalized groups. We are going to work also with uh, health mediators in order to address key needs of Roma community in this country, either from hygienic aspects or other uh, health related behavioral aspects. And the final dimension, which is very important, is to recover better, to use COVID-19 as a learning how we can deal better in the future. As I mentioned also in the previous slide, it is very important that we have dual focus for health service delivery, balancing COVID care with health service recovery. People need also other services with chronic diseases, with diabetes, with hypertension, 
with malnutrition, with all these dimension or acute emergencies that might approach. That's why we need to ensure that we have a solid primary health care to respond on new demand, to in enhance and resource optimize platform of service delivery and to strengthen coordination between all levels of care, primary, secondary and tertiary, and also nursing homes. Nursing and elderly homes are the key in order to minimize impact of this pandemic. Most of the cases in e EU countries have been recorded from elderly and nursing homes because they are more vulnerable. And also we need together to identify and remove barriers to seeking care. Every individual can play a role. This is a joint responsibility. It's not responsibility only of government, of institution. Everyone has a role to play. So if anyone is feeling unwell, they should not go to work, to school or public spaces in order to avoid transmission of COVID-19 to others in community. We will live also some time with this virus and we need to make sure that community is fully aware, every individual, that they need to act responsibly because this is giving also the larger responsibility for the community. So I will just list few aspects that everyone can even during this transition period can act accordingly. Everyone should maintain social distancing, one to two meter distance between yourself and other people, particularly those that are coughing, sneezing and have fever. Avoiding touching eyes, nose and mouth. Everyone should wash hands frequently with soap and water or alcohol based hand rub. If anyone is having fever, cough or difficult breathing, they should avoid close contact with others and wear masks, seek medical care early and share previous travel history. It's very important that we keep our balanced approach to health, eating balanced diet, getting enough sleep and take also usual precautions that everyone would need to take in order to avoid the flu. So how business can, can contribute towards safer public health? It's important that all enterprises, irrespective of the nature of their work, they should make sure that staff, contractors and customers have access to places where they can wash their hands with soap and water. Why? Because washing kills the virus on your hands and prevents the spread of COVID-19. This still remains the most simple and the most effective measure in order to prevent the further spread of the virus from one to another person. We need to make sure that in working places there is a good respiratory hygiene everywhere. It's important that to promote regular and through thorough hand washing by employees, contractors and customers. This is not one day business. It's every day and in every moment. Companies should put sanitizing hand rub dispensers in prominent places around the workplace and also to make sure that such are regularly refilled. In all these companies should display posters that promote hand washing. This should be combined also with other communication measures such as offering guidance from occupational health and safety officers, briefings at meetings and information in the intranet to promote hand washing. It might seem very simple, but all surveys that were conducted worldwide, even in the countries with, let's say, highest standards, the hand washing compliance seems to have been very low, even within healthcare facilities. 
That's why we need to ensure that hand washing is back becoming day to day practice. It's important also that respiratory hygiene is put in place. This could be combined with other communication measures in order to offer guidance for occupational health and safety officers, briefing on day to day meetings or other information. Companies should ensure that face masks, paper tissues are available at workplace for those who develop runny nose or cough at workplace along with closed bins for hygienically disposing of them. It's, and it's important this to be practiced regularly. I will just say a few more slides about the Bulgarian approach with regard to manage COVID-19. Based on the all assessments that we made as WHO and following situation on daily basis, sharing all risk communication materials, clinical management materials, infection control and prevention materials, either audiovisual through posters and other materials we could say that early and timely restrictive measures to contain the import of COVID-19 in Bulgaria were crucial. Today, Bulgaria is one of the countries which has the lowest number of cases per 1 million people within EU. And the same applies also for number of deaths. It's, it was very important to have whole government approach an engagement from the top level of government, the prime minister, the councils of the minister and competent ministries, regional and municipal administration and other to address crisis and render support. And what is the key feature of this unfortunate situation, the global pandemic? Here I could witness myself the solidarity in action by Bulgarian business community through different ways. But another dimension which was very important in order to cope so far well with the pandemic in Bulgaria was timely communication with the public, transparency of all actions that were undertaken on, on the daily briefs of the national operational headquarters. Just a few more words about business how they contributed to this situation. We often listen that health professionals are heroes. And yes, they are heroes because they are in the front line dealing with invisible enemy. But everyone somehow is hero. Also business leaders, leaders of different business companies could be considered heroes through supporting the fight against COVID-19 from mask donation to large amounts that were collected, large media coverage. Also, there were donor bank accounts open to collect funds for the COVID-19 in different municipalities to support people in need, but also to support employers and the partners proactive and reactive measures to protect employers and business partners and facilitate everyday life during pandemics. The same applies for responsible companies that can and do build strategies and initiatives that benefit society by supporting their employers, customers and the economy at large. Bulgarian business took active part in the fight against COVID-19 and donation campaigns and offer a free services to its consumers. This is a video which we will not be able to show through this live web stream webinar, but I would uh, ask the respected audience after that, I suppose you have the presentation, you could have a look to this video in which captures the key steps that were undertaken by World Health Organizations since the beginning 
of the first cases that were reported in 31st December in China and afterwards were spread across the world. And you could see that WHO has undertaken all needed measures in order to provide timely information to member states in order to be better prepared to face this pandemic. What would be the key messages of my presentation is solidarity. It should be at global, regional and national level. Without solidarity, we are all lost. When it comes to solidarity, we need to put joint efforts in order to develop drugs, vaccines and other commodities and this to be shared equally across the world. It means that no one is left behind. The second dimension is national unity. When it comes to such situations, everyone has to behave responsibly and there shouldn't be divisions between political parties on different goals because we right now we have only one enemy and that is the virus that is taking the lives of our loved ones. And the final takeaway message is personal and collective responsibility. If we behave individually and collectively as responsible society, we would have less impacts. We could see that some measures are easing here in Bulgaria, but every citizen, men and women, boys and girls, they have to behave responsibly to keep the distance, to protect themselves, to protect our fathers, mothers, grandfathers, grandmothers, the most vulnerable, because only in this way we can overcome this difficult situation together in the right way. And I will end up my presentation with a quote of your national hero. I don't need to tell you who is him. Vsičko se sastoji v naši te združeni sili. Srešto tja ne može da protivostoji i najsilnata stihija. Thank you, thank you very much.